Everybody, welcome to Wild Animal Wednesday. Today, we're going to learn about another type pool invertebrate, the sea anemone, which is in the family of the cnidarians, like the jellyfish. Fun fact: the sea anemone is named after the anemone flower. Now, wait a minute. Are sea anemones are they actually animals or are they? Flowers. They both. look a lot like sea flowers. Both, 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 both. Some scientists are starting to discover that the sea anemone is part animal, or mostly animal, but also part plant. It has a lot of plant-like characteristics as well. Sea anemone don't even have any heads, faces, or brains. What? <laughs> so how do they think? Whoa! They probably don't even think at all. They just eat the food. Well, sea anemones, they don't have brains, but instead they have a system of nerves. The nerves surround the body like a net, and they let the animal move its tentacles or attach to rocks. And they also help the anemone find food to eat. So though it doesn't have a brain, it has a set of nerves that it uses like a brain. So sea anemones are actually found in every ocean in the world mostly living in tide pools, but some can live as deep as 33,000 feet. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. Now, sea anemones come in a beautiful range of color. In fact, they can be any color. But although they are quite beautiful, they are dangerous. Dangerous. And ferocious. And ferocious. Because of their stinging, venomous tentacles. The tentacles are quite interesting because they can be short and stubby, or they can be very long and flowy. On the tip of each of these tentacles is the poison, the venom. So on the tip of each of these tentacles is the stinger where the venom is held. A sea anemone stinger is tiny. Its sting comes from a special cell in the tentacle. Each cell holds a sharp dart, and that dart carries the venom. When prey touches the stinger, the dart fires, and it shoots venom into the prey. So these sea anemones don't really have to go anywhere to eat, right? Right. The food comes to them. That's true. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, it is a good way to do it. Just sit back, stick to the ocean floor, stick to a rock, stick to the shell or coral. Wait and to let, get eaten. <laughs> let the food come to you. So speaking of food, what do the sea anemones eat? Well, because of their stinging tentacles, sea anemones are deadly predators. They often stay in one place and wait for food to come to them. They'll eat just about anything that does. This includes fish, shrimp, crabs, and other marine animals. But some animals, such as sea slugs, aren't harmed by the anemone's venom. They'll eat the sea anemone's tentacles and all. Butterfly fish will rip off a sea anemone's tentacles and then eat the rest. So what eats the sea anemone? The sea slugs aren't even harmed by their venom. Hmm? So the sea slugs can just go around eating these anemones, right? Yeah. Without being harmed at all. A little snack on the way. Mm-hmm. Now what else will eat the sea anemones? Sea stars, eels, codfish, and flounder. The symbiotic relationship between a sea anemone and a clownfish is a classic example of two organisms benefiting each other. The anemone provides the clownfish with protection and shelter, while the clownfish provides the anemone nutrients in the form of waste. The porcelain crab is another great example of a symbiotic relationship. The sea anemone offers protection for the porcelain crab, and the porcelain crab keeps the anemone free from debris. And we can't forget the symbiotic relationship between the anemone and the hermit crab. The sea anemone eats scraps of food that the hermit crab releases as they eat. And the hermit crab is protected from predators, like the octopus, by the painful sting of the sea anemone's tentacles. So sea anemones will reproduce a little bit different than some of these other marine invertebrates that we've learned about. The sea anemones release reproductive cells and the cells will meet in the water. 
Then they grow into larvae. The larvae drift until they attach to a solid object, and then they grow into flowery polyps. Slowly, the polyps get larger and larger until they become adults. Now, most sea anemones will stay in one spot their entire life, but if they need to, they can kind of move their little foot. Are you ready to draw these beautiful creatures? I sure am. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to draw two different views and two different kinds of sea anemones. I'm going to draw a side view with one that has some longer tentacles. And I'm also going to draw a top view with one that has shorter tentacles. So let's start with our long tentacled sea anemone. We have a long body called a column here. At the bottom is the pedal disc, also the foot. It's kind of like a suction cup that would stick to either rock or sometimes even another creature. At the top I'm going to make long flowy tentacles. Sea anemones really are just beautiful creatures. And it's amazing how diverse they are with how they look. And so many pretty colors, just like flowers. In many ways, they really are like flowers of the sea, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Although sea anemones can be quite beautiful, as we learned earlier, they are deadly powerful predators. Despite being sessile marine invertebrates, these sea anemones can pack a serious punch. They'll feed on prey organisms, including plankton, mollusks, crustaceans, and fish. And in even rare cases, the large species of sea anemones may even feed on larger animals, like seabirds. To get their food, sea anemones wait for their prey to get close enough so their tentacles can paralyze them. Once the victims are within reach, their tentacles will extend to catch and sting. Their tentacles are armed with specialized stinging cells called cnidocytes, similar to what a jellyfish has. Even the slightest touch can trigger these cells to fire harpoon-like structures onto their unsuspecting prey. Through these structures, the sea anemone injects a potent toxin that will immobilize the prey. The tentacles will then draw the helpless prey into the sea anemone's mouth and digestion will begin. Additionally, these tentacles can also draw in food scraps that are just floating by. Although the vast majority of these sea anemones are harmless to humans, some species have highly potent venom that could potentially injure or even kill a person. The Hell's Fire anemone, for example, can cause painful skin ulcers. Some carpet anemones can also cause anaphylactic shock and organ failure, both of which can potentially result in death. As you can see, I'm just kind of overlapping all of these long, long tentacles. There, and that's pretty complete, I'd say, for my tube anemone or the long tentacled anemone. Down here I'm going to draw the top of a short tentacled anemone, most likely the giant green sea anemone, which is one that we had the pleasure of really observing and discovering out on the Pacific coast. So the top view will be very much like a flower. So this central disc here on the top is its mouth. I'm going to draw a very light circle around there just to give me a guide for where all of my short tentacles will be. These short tentacles are almost like little teardrops. So we're just going to be drawing many, many, many little teardrops all around. So I'm going to speed up this part of my drawing, but you are more than welcome to pause and catch up if you need to. I'm 
I've drawn two layers with the teardrop shape, but my back layer, I'm just going to do zigzags to speed up the process. And just one more layer of zigzags. Now we are ready to label our sea anemones. I'll start with my tall, long tentacled sea anemone. Of course we have the tentacles. As we remember on the tip of those tentacles, that's where that little dart of poison is. Now deep inside here, we have the mouth, but we're not gonna label it on our tall sea anemone. We're just going to label it on our top view. So now let's label the column. Which is the body. And down here, Here we have the petal disc. Or the foot. What a contrast to our sea stars that had all those little tiny tube feet. Yeah. And this little sea anemone, just one foot. All right, now for our top view. Of course, right in there. And here, I'm just going to use my same word tentacles and draw a few arrows from that word. Fairly simple. The sea anemone is quite the simple creature, yet still quite so beautiful. And it's going to be especially fun to color because they can come in so many different colors and it doesn't even have to be all one color. You can do a little splotches of some different colors. I've seen quite a few tentacles that almost have like stripes on them with color. I think the color will be especially fun, don't you? Let's color! Bye!